Brady and I have just been looking at some photos from the 1930s archive of Nottingham. These are labs that were the real state of the art. The building had just been built. As far as I know that these photos here are of research students, we know that at least one of them called Wagstaff, who's here, subsequently, 10 years later, died in the Second World War. He was on a bomber which disappeared and never returned. Behind these photos, there are very real personal stories. There are some quite strange things. People smoking pipes. Some of you might not even know what a pipe is. Wooden thing for smoking tobacco. They're not wearing safety glasses. There are loads of chemicals everywhere. It's pretty untidy. There are no women. I suppose that's not so surprising because even when I was a student, there weren't many women chemists. These labs were brand new when the photo had been taken. And we're in a really lucky position that I can show you some labs that are also brand new. They were opened two weeks ago. So let's go upstairs and see what differences we can spot. Before we go up, I should show you my tie, a special tie with test tubes and things on it. What's really special is that here, Jim Gamble set it on fire with white phosphorus in the middle of a lecture. Before we go in, let me stress, this is a teaching lab. It's for science, technology, engineering, and maths. Though what the mathematicians will do in this lab, I'm not sure. So the first thing you notice, everything's white. The benches are white, the lab coats are white, whereas you can see in the photo that the benches are dark, and I think their lab coats are a darkish color. The next thing you notice is it's enormous compared to this lab in the photo. There are many more students. This is partly because there are many more students in universities than there were in the 1930s. There are lots more fume cupboards. In the photo, there's perhaps one. And you can see here, there are fume cupboards everywhere. The other thing that's really funny is that some of the fume cupboards have transparent backs. So if we go round here, you can see the students working away without even needing to wear safety glasses. And at the same time, we frighten them away. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for them because if I want to demonstrate something, they can stand round this side and watch what I'm doing. Brady's really excited because he can imagine videoing Neil from a completely different angle, seeing what he's really thinking when he doesn't speak. So we can walk along this corridor to get to the middle part of the lab. And again, you'll see there are quite big differences. One of the things you'll see immediately is that the people who are teaching are wearing colored lab coats like me so that the students can immediately see who can help them. We have red coats are inorganic chemists and the green ones over there are the organic chemists. So that's also an innovation, mixing up organic chemists and inorganic chemists together. It makes the lab much more flexible. It means you don't need to have all the equipment duplicated. One of the things that hasn't changed very much from this photo is the sink. You can see here there's still a sink with relatively similar taps, but the difference is that the sink's now made out of plastic rather than porcelain or china, so that if you drop some glassware in there, it doesn't break. You see? So you don't have to pay for it. But students nowadays don't have to pay for their glassware anyway. In the old days, some students had to finish their course early because they couldn't pay for the glassware that they were breaking. Dreadful. There's one difference from really quite recent labs. There are lots and lots of fire extinguishers. When I was teaching in the lab on the floor below, a student set fire to the bench and it took me a long time to find the fire extinguisher 
and by then the bench was really blazing away and once we put it out for years I saw this charred mark every time I went into the lab. The most exciting thing about this lab is something which you might not have noticed. This bench here, which has taps, is fixed, just like the benches in the old labs, which were all fixed down and had to stay there for years and years and years. But all the other benches that you can see in both directions are on wheels. And so if we suddenly decide we'd like to change the way we teach this particular class, in an afternoon, we can completely change the configuration of the lab, move the benches around, move the electrical power around, and so on. The key to the flexibility are these sort of elephant trunks, because what these are doing are they contain the electrical power to the benches, the internet connections, and of course the pipes for the piped nitrogen and compressed air that you have on the benches and the water, apart from the basins where you wash your hands and some glassware, all the water is in the fume cupboards. I haven't mentioned gas. We all think of Bunsen burners in labs. There's no gas in this lab. So how do they heat things up? The answer is with a gas gun like this. I had to be taught how to use it a few minutes ago. You clip it down, and a flame comes out. The door of the fume cupboard is automated like a lift. You press the button. One of the things that I thought was interesting is that when a bubble catches fire, the burning gas continues to move up almost the same shape as the bubble.